um, perfect community is represented in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He also knew that community was important to us. So when he sent his, when he sent Jesus, um, he could have sent him just for salvation and that was enough. Amen. If he sent Jesus to die for me, to save me, that would be enough, but he did more. And I think there's a beautiful moment that happened. If you recognize when Jesus died, the veil was torn. Now, a lot of times we say that, but there also the rocks were split and the heavens were rent. That was a massive, violent opening up of what happened. And what he did was he made a way for us to be in his presence that wasn't as available, as freely available as it was. Now, did he come and rest on people? Yes, in the Old Testament. We'll talk about that here in a bit. The Holy Spirit did do things in the Old Testament. If you think that the Holy Spirit is only in the New Testament, I encourage you to read the rest of the Bible. He's all over um, the Old Testament. But the amazing thing that happened when Jesus died is he made a way for the Holy Spirit to be with us and remain. He says, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that is alive in me. Now, to be honest, if I speak on any, if I don't say anything else, that should be enough to change everything walking out of here. Let's, let's catch it for a second. The same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is the same power that is alive in you. Not dormant, not waiting. He is alive in you. When you say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God and step forward into salvation, it says he comes and he takes refuge in us. He lives in us. That same power is available to you today. So we're going to talk about what that looks like. I, I grew up not knowing very much about Holy Spirit. I don't know if you, you guys realize that there's a couple of subjects that divide the church. <laughs> Thank you. There's, so worship tends to divide the church, doesn't it? Right? I like this. I like this. This is the sound I like. This is the way I like to do it. Right? We, we choose where we go based on whether I like this so let me, one of the things that we, we talk about in, in our worship community workshop that we did is that worship really isn't about music. It's about a life of sacrifice, right? It's about how I give back to God. And I can do that through music, but it's not necessarily music, right? Worship is at its core sacrifice. But one of the other things that divides us as a church that should unite us, it's meant to unite us is Holy Spirit, and Holy Spirit was given to us. Jesus said, I have to leave so another could come. And he came to do some specific things that I think it's important for us to know. So we're going to talk about Holy Spirit today. What he does, why is he here? Why is he here and available for us to do? So there's some, there's some great passages. Let's, um, let's keep going. Let's, let's, uh, I've, learned, I've learned that I can't do life without the Holy Spirit. Um, so... I tried for a long time to do life without the Holy Spirit. Uh, I would try to do everything in head knowledge and understanding. And I was in a, a small Baptist church um, in Hamlin, Texas. And I read this passage from Mark chapter 16. It said, these signs shall accompany those who believe in my name. It says they will heal the sick. They'll cast out demons. They'll, they'll speak in new tongues. This is the passage. That I, please look it up. Mark chapter 16. I had, to, I had to ask myself the question, well, do I believe in that? Because I hadn't done any of that. It didn't say, you're going to do this. That's not what it says. Re read what it says again. It says, these signs shall accompany those who believe in my name. So I had to ask myself the question, either I didn't fully believe in his name, right? This is where I was. Or I didn't fully believe in that scripture. So I was at a juncture in my life. Am I going to, am I going to just pick and choose what I want to believe in the Bible? Or am I going to look at this and look at myself as a reflection there and say, okay, God, I want to do that. I want to, I want to have that type of faith. So I did. I remember it was in March of 2009 and uh, we were down here within six months. It's very quick how it changed. I said, God, I want that type of faith. And I heard him very clearly say, are you sure? I said, absolutely. And then he said, well, then hold on. And I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, my life has never been the same from that moment. 
Listen, I grew up in church. I'm, some of you may have this testimony. This is an interesting testimony. People ask you, do you know when you were saved? I have been with God my whole life, but I can tell you the moment when he became real. I knew about him before then, but at that moment is when I was introduced to him and he started talking to me in a very different way. And I believe that's the moment I really opened myself up to have Holy Spirit take refuge in my heart. He was there. I was already marked. Understand, when you're a believer, you're already marked by the Holy Spirit for him. But I wasn't taking time to talk with him and be with him and really let him in and talk to me. Holy Spirit is here now to talk to you. We're going to actually go through that. That is a promise um, in God's word that the Holy Spirit will speak to you. But I'm sure a lot of you thought, okay, well, well Kendall's going to get up and speak about worship because that's what he likes to do. Okay, we'll get there. But there's a, <laughs> but there's a part of this that I really want to give us some framework because the Bible says that we cannot worship except by the Holy Spirit, right? So here's, the, here's our first scripture. It says in Philippians 3 in the Amplified, it says, for we who are born again, have been reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, set apart for his purpose. We are the true circumcision who worship in the spirit of God and glory and take pride and exult in Christ Jesus and place no confidence in what we have or who we are in the flesh. That's a pretty strong standard. We have been reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, and set apart for his purpose. Amen. Sometimes I need to take a look into that mirror and say, that's who I am. Because I drift off to the side a little bit and think, maybe I'm not, maybe I'm not qualified. He says, no, listen, we have been reborn, spiritually transformed, renewed, and set apart for his purpose. Amen. That's who you are. You can claim that this morning because that's who you are. You are the true circumcision. This is the cutting that we've been talking. Steve likes to cut about this a lot. This is the cutting and in, in, in separating from the world. Just because we're in the world doesn't mean we are of the world. So you have been cut apart, set apart, right? I lost my scripture. But it says who worship in the spirit of God. That's how we worship. The Holy Spirit is in you to help you, to help you know what to do, to help you know right from wrong. So the Lord wants to speak to you. So here's the promise as I was referring to. So Jesus told us that the Holy Spirit would speak to us. This is in John chapter 16. And I've been referring to this with a lot of my students recently, John chapter 16, verses 7 through 13. If you want to turn there in your, in your Bible app and look at this and highlight it, this is a really good promise for you. John 14, 15, 16, 17, there's a lot of beautiful wisdom in what Jesus pours out right before his crucifixion. But there's a promise here that a lot of times we gloss over. So I want to read this to you today. Jesus says, however, I am telling you nothing but the truth when I say it is profitable, good, expedient, advantageous for you that I go away. Because if I do not go away, the comforter, the counselor, the helper, the advocate, intercessor, Strengthener, stand by. Isn't that good? It's your comforter, your counselor, your helper, your advocate, your intercessor, your strengthener, your stand by. It's so important that the Holy Spirit is part of my life. Don't, you, don't we need that? I need this every day. I need an intercessor. I need an advocate. I need a strengthener. Jesus knew this. This is why he had to leave so that he could come. He said, he will not come. He said, I, I, if I do not go away, the comforter will not come to you into close fellowship with you. So here's community. He's just talked about. He wants to come into community with you, not just to be near you, but to talk with you. Listen to what he says. But if I go away, I will send him to you to be in close fellowship with you. And when he comes, he will convict and convince the world and bring a demonstration to it about sin and about righteousness, uprightness of heart and right standing with God and about judgment, about sin, 
because they do not believe in me, trust in, rely on, and adhere to me. I love that, adhere to, clean, literally stick to. About righteousness, uprightness of heart, and right standing with God, because I go to my Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler, evil genius prince of this world, Satan, is judged and condemned and sentenced already is passed upon him. That's right, exactly. I still, I have still many things to say to you, but you're not able to bear them or to take them upon you or to grasp them now. Verse 13. But when he, the spirit of truth, the truth giving spirit comes, he will guide you into all the truth, the whole truth, the full truth. Did we get that? <laughs> Let me say, he, the spirit of truth. How often do we refer to Holy Spirit as the spirit of truth? That's who he is. He wants to give you truth. So often when we get offended, we don't go and pray and talk to Holy Spirit. We just get upset and kind of get in our own space. But the spirit of truth wants to speak to us and say, hold on a second. Maybe you're offended for some different reasons. Let me speak some other things into you. I can guarantee you there have been so many times where I have had to learn to step back and say, Father, where am I missing it? And then he speaks and he changes my heart. Not because of something I did, but because of something he speaks into me. This is why the Holy Spirit is so important for us now. Because we have to weigh everything with truth, right? One of the things that I love that Jason, Pastor Jason says is, it's not about right or wrong. It's about truth and lies. And where are we going to get the truth? From the word of God and the spirit of truth who are in constant and consistent agreement. Amen? So we have to look at things and say, God, is this of you? And he'll speak to you. I'm going to continue on. The spirit of truth, he said, he will guide you into all the truth, the whole truth, the full truth. For he will not speak his own message on his own authority, on his own authority but he will tell whatever he hears from the Father. He will give the message that has been given to him, and he will announce and declare to you the things that are to come that will happen in the future. The Holy Spirit wants to speak to you, and he wants to only speak to you what the Lord is saying to him. Does this sound very similar when when Jesus would say, I only do what pleases the Father? This is just a couple of chapters earlier, if you want to look it up. It's in John, but it's in a couple chapters earlier. But there is this beautiful line that happens between the Holy Spirit and the Son and the Father. I was a, I was a youth pastor um, at a church right up the road, probably about, this is what brought us down here, is to be a youth pastor, and um, had a, a young lady come in and she said, who do you pray to? And I'm like, okay, this seems loaded. And I said, well, we, so we pray to God. And she says, that's Jesus, right? And I said, and I said, no, there's, there's something happening here. I said, God, what do you want me to say? So here's the catch. I didn't just try to go from, and can I be really transparent? I didn't do this out of like, I know to do this. I was, I was scared. I was like, oh no, I'm going to give this girl the wrong answer. So I said, God, what do I say here? And this is the answer now that I've given. Anytime I, I say, who do I pray to? I pray by the spirit through Jesus to the father. That's what he gave me. You're right. You, I felt this move in my spirit. I was like, okay. He said, so tell her, I pray by the Spirit through Jesus to the Father. What's great is scripturally looking that back up. That's right. I didn't know that at the time, but I listened to the Spirit of truth who had something to say to me that could speak into her life and tell her what she needed to hear at that moment. So I pray by the Spirit through Jesus to the Father. He wants to speak to you. He wants to spend time with you. He wants to tell you. It even says in here things to come. Now, isn't that interesting? Because a lot of us just say, oh, that's a little, that's a little weird. Hey, listen, guys, the spirit is not limited by time. We have this idea that he's going through time with us. But the same Holy Spirit that is here with me right now is the same spirit that was with Jesus, not not similar. He's the same. That was with Jesus on the cross. That will be with us in glory. He's the same. 
We're limited by time. We're limited by space. I don't want to serve a God that's limited by those things. And he's not because he made all those things. Amen? He's not limited by those things. So if he can speak to you about the things to come, it's because he's already there. So do you hear all the things that the Holy Spirit wants to do through you, with you, for you? The Holy Spirit, my comforter, my counselor, my helper, my advocate, my intercessor, my strengthener, my standby. Listen, to be sure that the Holy Spirit is not a vending machine for you to just punch a button and say, give me this. That is not what this is about. Because you can look at this and say, okay, I I need all these things. Give me, give me, give me. That's not how this is supposed to work. How this is supposed to work is I let go and I let him do. Because when it becomes about my will and the things that I want, this doesn't work. All of this is about submission and letting go. You know, one of the most beautiful things about the gift of, of speaking in tongues is, is if I've seen many studies of where they put people in a brain scan machines and it says their brain scan is lowered when they're speaking in tongues. How is that possible when this motor is moving so quickly? Because I'm not connecting to this. I'm connecting to the Holy Spirit. So the difference here is I'm not trying, I'm not striving. So often we try to come and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and we start, I I have to do. It's not about doing. It's about letting him in and letting go. I had to learn to be quiet. (laughs) That should have been a better joke than it was. I I talk, thank you, Danik. (laughs) I had to learn to be quiet and listen. I was never told, hey, when you pray, stop. Listen. Let him speak. It was, make sure you had a list. This is not bad. Make sure you have a list. You have your petition. This is who you're praying for. And when you're done, you're done. But what changed in my life is when he said, are you going to let me talk? So I have a, I have a, a book um, at the same church I was at, I have this book that he, we, were, we were doing um, uh, 21 days of prayer and fasting, and, and I had the 12 to 1 shift in the church, and he said, on the first couple of days, he said, I want you to get a book, and I want you to write down what I'm going to tell you. And so I, I prayed back, and I said, okay, God, I will, um, I'll write it down on my phone, and I'll, I'll get it later. And he said, I didn't tell you to put it in your phone. I said, go get a book. So I did. <laughs> And he started telling me things about how to treat my wife better and my kids better and my life better. And I go back and reference those because that was 11, 12 years ago. And I can see, oh my gosh, that's when that changed. That's what, and he, he told me to write it down, not, not just for my sake, but for others. In Habakkuk 2, he says, write, down, write this down so that others will know right? And he even says it again in Revelation, write this down. I had to go back. I'm like, why is God telling me to write this down? And he confirms it in scripture. I want to encourage you as you start to learn to listen for Holy Spirit, he always confirms it in scripture. I couldn't believe that there were scriptures that says, hey, write this down so that other people will know. I thought I was going to find nothing, but I found Habakkuk 2.2 and in the end of Revelation, it says, write this vision down so that others will know. The Holy Spirit is not someone that's distant. He's not, even though he has all this power, it's not mystical and kooky. He's a person who loves you and wants to connect you to the Father. And the only way that we worship, the only way that we can say Jesus is Lord is by the Holy Spirit. One of the thing, reasons why we, we practice is because I'm trying to pray the entire time. If I don't know my stuff when I'm on the keyboard or when I'm on, if I don't know it, I can't pray. I'm distracted by other things. But if I'm not praying and in constant communication with him, I'm just playing a song. Like I want to hear what he has to say. 
What are, you, what are you saying in this moment? What do you want to do? And there's moments where I have to step back and stop with all of the stuff and say, God, am I missing it? And he'll tell me. Now, there's been a couple of times where there was one time we were doing a song and I knew we weren't supposed to do it with the track. We were supposed to stop it and I didn't. And uh, I, I texted my, the whole team. I said, hey, guys, I repent. I am sorry. I know we were supposed to do that without the track right now. Um, can we do that for altar call? And we did. And I will tell you, if I hadn't repented to them at first and tried to cover my own tracks and say, let's just do that for altar call, I wouldn't have laid the groundwork for the Holy Spirit to move. I would have been trying to hide in, in my deception. And, but I needed to be transparent and open and say, okay, I missed it. Like the Holy Spirit spoke to me and I, and I missed it. So I, I want to go in obedience in the direction that he wants me to go. And there was a, a powerful move of the Holy Spirit that day. I'm not saying that, please don't hear that I'm the cause of that, but I'm telling you, I could have been the, I could have impeded that. I could have been the block. And I don't want to be that. I I think one of the outcries of, of this church is we want to feel the Holy Spirit move and flow. And one of the questions we have to ask ourselves is, how am I impeding him? I don't want to stop him. How can I be a place where he rests on me. You see, Jesus said, I only do what pleases the Father. The Holy Spirit says, I will only do what the Father says. So it's very important for us to be in connection and let that flow go and keep moving through us. I love it that um, the Holy Spirit (laughs) wants to speak to you. It said, it's not that he might speak, Amen. It's not that he might speak. I like that. I like hearing babies. Um, He doesn't say, if you're lucky, you might catch a glimpse of me. Um, It says, God is speaking to you through the Holy Spirit. It's a promise and a fulfillment of prophecy. Ezekiel 36 says this. He says, so we read the first part of it. I'm going to read this in the Amplified and then in the message. So the 27, it says, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall heed my ordinances and do them. The message says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I'll remove the stone heart from your body and replace it with a heart that's God-willed and not self-willed. I'll put my spirit in you and make it possible for you to do what I tell you and live by my commands. So this is what the spirit wants to do for us. He wants to tell us what's going, what's right from wrong. What am I doing? What am I missing? Where am I going? Where, I, I'm not seeing all of this, God. Where am I missing that? He wants to have a conversation and help us to have right steps with the Father. <clears throat> I, I wrote this down last night. He said, listen to your roommate. <laughs> You know, if the Spirit is living in you, (laughs) we need to listen to our roommate. He's here with us, right? And so often, how many, how many of you, we can all go back and say, man, I knew I wasn't supposed to do blank, or I knew I was, yeah, I knew I was supposed to do, because there's this moment that the Spirit wants to talk with us. He wants to have a conversation. I reference, um, how many of you were here a couple weeks ago when, when Jason um, played the video of Ravi, when Ravi was listening to the Holy Spirit and he says, hey, let's, I feel like I'm supposed to go here. This, this is a person who has spent time cultivating the presence of God, right? Can you imagine us all being that way where we're waking up and saying, okay, God, what do you want to do today? That's available. What he's doing is just because he did it not because, well, okay, so Ravi is, is a unique person. He's the only one who can do that. No, he's, he said yes. Your yes to waking up. I'm, I'm even hearing God say, oh, Kendall, there are people in this room that do that, that wake up, that say, Holy Spirit, what do you want to do today? Holy Spirit, what do you want to do today? It, it's not about doing whatever we want. It's about coming into alignment with God and letting him do whatever he wants. Listen to what Paul says in Titus. This is a message translation. I I liked this translation because it was a little easier to understand. Um, So let's read this real quick. It says, 
It wasn't so long ago that we ourselves were stupid and stubborn. Easy marks for sin. Ordered every which way by our glands. <laughs> that made me laugh. Going around with a chip on our shoulder, hated and hating back. But when God, our kind and loving Savior God, stepped in, he saved us from all that. It was all his doing. We had nothing to do with it. He gave us a good bath. <laughs> I like that. It's, anyways, you should look at the other translation, but that was really good. It came out, when we came out of it, new people washed inside and out by the Holy Spirit. Our Savior Jesus poured out new life so generously. God's gift has restored our relationship with him and given us back our lives. And there's more to come, an eternity of life. You can count on this. So Holy Spirit wants to live with you. He wants to live with you. He wants to speak to you. He wants to rest on you. So you were designed. This is you, you were made from day one to be a temple of the living God. Corinthians says this. Do you not know that your body is the temple, the very sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who lives in you? You were made, you were made specifically to house the Holy Spirit. That's your goal. You, that's who you are. You were made to house the Holy Spirit. Not contain. See, I love, one of the things I've heard many times is the Holy Spirit is not a lake, he's a river, so you have to let him flow through you. Right? Stagnant water stops. It's not good. But the river needs to flow. Right? Do you not know that your body is the temple, the very sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who lives within you, whom you have received as a gift from God? You are not your own. You've been bought. You've been purchased at a price, a very high price. It's a price that he values you. And not only... Did he pay that price for you? But you got something in return. You were bought at a price, purchased with a preciousness and paid for, made his own. So then honor God and bring glory to him in your body. So it's about a relationship with God that the spirit has come. It is about fellowship. It's, I have had to repent. And so repent, understand, and, and is not just, I'm not going to do that. I have to change the way that I think. I have to let God change how I think about something. So I've had to let God change how I think about Holy Spirit many, many times because I learned a lot about God the Father. I learned about, about God the Son, but we just, we didn't know what to do. <laughs> we didn't really know what to do with Holy Spirit. It's a little different. But the interesting thing is, is that it's a cumulative effect. Like the, the Father had the Son come so that the Spirit could come so that He could be with me and walk with me. Not just remain as a marker, even though that would be enough. I would love that if He was just here for me as a marker, but there's more. How many of us have just said, I want more? I want more. And God keeps telling you, it's available for you. There is more available for you. I love that you said that this morning, that we, it's, <laughs> it's kind of like a superpower. <laughs> How many of you have ever been given a word of knowledge by somebody that comes up to you and says something? How do you know that? And the person who's giving it to you is like, I don't know. What does that mean to you? That's because all they are is a vessel. All we are is a vessel. But those are the greatest moments when I know. <laughs> all right, I'll tell you. So there was... <laughs> When my wife and I used to do worship together a, a lot, and she was really good about giving very specific words for people. And I would always get upset. I was like, God, I can't do that. And he goes, well, she's meant to be a lens. She focuses me. You're meant to be a window. You just need to let me pass through. And I said, well, why? I want to be a lens. And he said, well, you're not created to be a lens. Why are you jealous of the lens? Don't be this is a lens. I need this to see. Like everybody just got blurry, right? But we also need windows. So he would tell me, I would have a word for someone and I would start to say something that I thought was good too. He's like, I didn't say that. <laughs> and so I'd have to repent to them and say, okay, God didn't say that. He said this, right? I was meant to be a window, but I was in a conversation with him. Now, um, 
My mother is 81 years old. She lives in Bloomington, Indiana. And about three or four years ago, she called me on the phone. And she said, um, Kendall, um, I'm not making fun. So don't think I'm making fun of you. She goes, but what does God's voice sound like? And I said, well, in my mind, he sounds like me, but he says things I would never say. And she says, well, what do you mean? So I, there's been so many testimonies of times where the Lord has asked me to do something. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you one. Um, and I, it's not that, how can I say this? Oh, this is what I want to be careful about. It's so often when we hear the testimonies, we see, man, I want to be like that person. Let me, let me be really clear. Most of the time, I'm kind of stumbling through it, and I'm kind of just getting to where God wants to go. And then by the time it's done, it's this beautiful thing that happened, but he did it all. And at the end of the other side of it, I get to say, wow, that was pretty neat. Right? And so this is where we're moving is to say, I want to hear your voice. I want to respond to you because... As I said in John 16, it says, this is a promise for you. So, um, man, just asking, is that the right one? <laughs> uh, I, I've told this one to you before, for, uh, probably about a year and a half ago, but I've, I feel like I'm supposed to revisit it. Um, so I was, on a, I was getting ready to go to, on a flight to, to uh, Vietnam for a mission trip, and I was reading a book uh, by Smith Wigglesworth, and... Um, the Lord said, I don't want you to read a book. I want you to do something. And I said, okay, what do you want me to do? This is how I responded. Not like, oh God, I'm ready. That's not how I responded. I said, oh, what do you want me to do? And I look up and my name is on the wall. It says Kindle. And, and I, I, it's on my Facebook <laughs> where, where it says my name in white letters with a red background. And I said, oh, <laughs> you have my attention. Uh, that's really important that he gets your attention. So often we give him half of our attention. We're thinking about something else. But be reminded in Exodus when the Lord was speaking to Moses and the bush was burning, he just let it burn until he got Moses. He says, it literally says, and when he saw that he had Moses' attention, then he spoke. If you want him to speak and he's not speaking, Please give him your full attention. Stop thinking about all the other things that you have to do. Set time aside to listen and only listen. It makes you feel like you're not doing anything. I'm not working. I have to get something done. I need to be busy. But this is the interesting thing that our society has done has pulled us away from these moments of sitting and listening and stopping because those aren't productive times. We're not being productive, right? But in the heavenlies, we are. If we're stopping and listening and holding ourselves accountable to what we're supposed to do. So he said, I want you, she said, you see that lady behind the bar? And I said, yeah. And she said, he said, um, she has a brother and he has a hurt leg and I want to heal him. And I said, oh, okay. I said, first of all, what are the chances, number one, that uh, she has a brother? And what are the chances that he has a hurt leg? It's very, very small, right? So I said, okay, God, I really don't want to hurt your testimony. This is the, I don't want to go to this person, bully, hey, I want to do this. I, I didn't want to come up and say this. And this person say, I, I don't know, none of that. And then I hurt their belief in God. I don't want to be that type of vessel. So I said, God, I'm going to go down. I'm looking for a sign that says go. And if I see a sign that says go, I'll go down and do something. If not, I won't, I won't say anything. So I go down and there's a sign that says Chili's to go. It's a huge, which I still don't understand why it was a Chili's to go in an airport. Um, everything is to go there. Um, <laughs> but it said go. So I, I got my coffee, turned back around and, and sat down and I said, um, Hi, how are you? And she said, how are you? And I said, um, <laughs> uh, I'm, a, I'm a local youth news pastor that, uh, that prays it for people. And she said, I, I, or she actually asked me, do I, do, you, do I need anything? And I said, no, I, I don't need anything. I've got my coffee. And she said, but can I ask you a question? And she said, yeah. And she was, that kind of got her to step back because I don't know if you've ever had just a random stranger in the airport ask you a question, but it's normally not a good thing. 
Uh, <laughs> but I said, I'm a local youth pastor that that's just was praying. And I, I heard the Lord say that um, you have a brother. Do you have a brother? And she said, yeah. And I said, does he have a hurt leg? She said, yeah, he hurt it while playing basketball. Well, bluntly, I didn't think I'd get that far. I thought at that point in time, one of those was going to be wrong. I'm like, okay, thanks. I said, well, okay. So <laughs> I believe the Lord wants to heal your brother. Can I pray for you? And can I lay hands on you and pray for him right now? And she said, okay. So I laid hands and prayed on her and then I left to go on the trip. And I, I posted it on Facebook and, she, and all these people were like, wow, that's a great story. I wonder what happened. Folks, listen, God it doesn't have to show off. He doesn't have to pull tricks out of his hat to impress people. So I knew I had to go back and find this person and kind of write the rest of the story because I needed other people to hear it. Um, so, you know, as, as I'm coming back on the trip, I'm thinking about all these things I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to find out where, where I was. and what. I land at the same gate that I took off from, and she's there going through some sort of printout. It was like, it was weird. I remember seeing, it's like a dot matrix. So it was like some sort of weird printout. And I walked up, say, hey, I, I can tell you're really busy. I don't want to bother you, but um, how are you? And she says, I'm doing great. I said, do you remember me? She said, oh yeah, I remember you. I said, <laughs> I said um, and then I said, how are you? And then I said, um, how's your brother? And she said, he's great. I said, is his leg still in a cast? And she says, no, sir, it is not. And I said, thank you very much. So I learned a lot in that moment Number one, that God is not limited by my space and time. I'll never know who that person is. I will never know, not only the person who the brother is, never know. But God healed that person. <laughs> I'm just telling you, this is the kind of crazy things. I'm, I'm not telling you just to be, oh, this is, my, this is what happened. This is a testimony of my life that I was just honored to be a part of and see. Um, but if I hadn't had looked up and said, okay, God, I'm available for you then it wouldn't have happened. It's about being available for him to rest on you in that moment and move in power. That's what we're talking about today. And even in worship, there's moments where he comes upon us and rests on us and moves in power. In your day, he comes to you, rests on you, moves in power. Isn't that what we want? Don't we remember those times when we feel the Lord rest on us and move in power? That's what we're after. It says, it says that was what was going to happen um, in Isaiah. Listen to what it says in Isaiah. I love this. This really spoke so much to me. Isaiah chapter 11, it says, There shall come forth a shoot out of the stock of Jesse, David's father, and a branch out of his roots shall grow and bear fruit. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might. I've learned, I, in researching, I learned so many names for Holy Spirit that I'm writing down remembering. Listen, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the reverential and obedient fear of the Lord. Listen, one of the reasons why we sing the song, People Get Ready, there's a part where she says, will people be bowing on their knees in repentance, true repentance. When the spirit comes, there is a fear of the Lord that comes with it a respect for what the Lord is about to do. <laughs> when I get to speak, I get afraid. I don't want to say anything wrong that is going to change your hearts except from being to the Father. I'm like, God, I just pray. I get nervous. I, I, don't, I don't care if you think I've done a good or a bad job. I care that you've seen God in some way, shape, or form. That you don't see me, but you see him moving. And if I can get out of the way for about 40 minutes, that's what I'm wanting to do. Does that make sense? So that you can hear him. And I feel, I felt like today he said he's wanting to tell you that the Holy Spirit is not something to put on a shelf, but something to wear, to put on you, to let in you, to let fill you up. He, the constant filling of the Holy Spirit and overflow is what we want to happen. It's an all-encompassing thing, right? The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the reverential and obedient fear of the Lord. I'm sorry, I'm going fast. I apologize. <laughs> and shall make him of quick understanding. 
and his delight shall be in the reverential and obedient fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, neither decide by the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness and justice, he shall judge the poor and decide with fairness for the meek, the poor and the downtrodden of the earth. And he shall smite the earth and the oppressor with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips, he shall slay the wicked. That's good. The spirit is going to do all of those things by resting on him and speaking. This is what's going to happen. That's why when we sing, open up the eyes of my heart, Lord, to see you. Open up the ears of my heart, Lord, to hear you. We're not supposed to hear with physical ears and physical eyes, but by a different spirit that gives us insight into things, not as we perceive them to be, but as God knows them to be. Jesus says the Father is looking for those. He's looking for those who worship him in spirit and truth. And a time will come, however, and indeed it is already here, it says in John 4, when the true genuine worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, reality. For the Father is seeking such people as these, as his worshipers. God is a spirit, a spiritual being, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So true worship cannot happen without Holy Spirit. He who moves us in us and through us and opens our hearts, worship of any kind doesn't happen without this community, without this fellowship. Even worshiping by yourself You're just joining the hosts of heaven, and they'll never stop. One of the reasons why we started Worship Community um, in 2021 was to practice that cumulative effect, was when two or more are gathered. So that's why we're moving Worship Community to Friday nights. Worship Community will be once a month on Friday nights, starting in February, so we can come together as a body and practice the presence of God. We can pray together, we can worship together, and learn to listen for the voice of God together. So that's where worship community is moving to. It's also moving into homes. That's a different conversation. We've seen that, and it's been a beautiful thing that we've seen with, with the homes and with the Hodges. We've got a, 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 a group together that is really working on opening that up. I love that working with the Fitzpatricks and their heart for seeing worship grow. There are powerful men and women of God who just want to see his spirit move and to hear him clearly. So here's the charge as we get ready to end. Here's what he says. So I, I say to you, ask and keep on asking and it shall be given to you. Seek and keep on seeking and you shall find. Knock and keep on knocking and the door shall be open to you. For everyone who asks and keeps on asking receives and he who seeks And keeps on seeking, finds. And him who knocks and keeps on knocking, the door will be open. What father among you, if his son asks for a loaf of bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? That's a great verse. (laughs) This is, I love this translation because this this is what stood out to me. Because what I'm used to hearing is, is good gifts. But listen to what this translation says. This is the Amplified Classic. It says, if you then, evil as you are, know how to give good gifts, gifts that are to their advantage for your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask and continue to ask Him? This is why we ask for more of Holy Spirit. This is why we ask for more, because he is a gift that keeps giving, keeps filling us to overflowing. So as we close, I want to read you. I, one of the things I like to do is I like to find, I, I, I look for songs where I feel like the Lord is in at that moment. And there's a new song called The Dove, and I'm, we're going we're to worship to that as, as we bring the prayer team to the altar. So as the prayer team comes to the altar, I'm going to read this song beforehand and hoping that it moves your heart. But we're going to play it on the screen as we, as we pray because I want to give you a chance to come. I want to, I want to pray. I want to pray for you. I want to pray with you. Um, but here is, here's the song, um, the dove. It says, God was there at the beginning. 
his spirit brooding like a dove, spoke the earth into existence, formed creation that he loved. Man was born of perfect image, made to be a friend of God, meant to dwell within his presence. It's where we all belong. Holy Spirit, all we need is more of you. We want more of you. When sin had spoiled creation, the creator sent a flood. On the cusp of a new beginning, he again released the dove. And after all the searching, it found a place to land on Christ, the perfect son, who would redeem it all again. Looking for the branches, it landed on the vine, one for our redemption, who would bridge eternal life. Holy Spirit, the truth, the living water, all we need is more of you. We want more of you. Holy Spirit, the helper and the healer, all we need is more of you. We want more of you. So let this be an upper room. Light the flame, we burn for you. Holy, holy, holy spirit. Like a mighty rushing wind, pour your spirit out again. Holy, holy spirit. It is not by my own earning to have the helper at my side. The gift was fully purchased when the lamb was crucified. So now, freely, I can ask him, for his blood has washed me clean. Let the dove of heaven rest upon the Christ in me. This sums up what we talked about today. This is what we're asking for, is for the Holy Spirit to rest on us, to fill on us, to move. Um, prayer team, if you'd like to come down and get ready to receive um, people as, as either want to. Um, but I want to give you a time to respond. The response that I'm calling you today is, I want more of you, Holy Spirit. That's the call we're asking for. Do you want more of Holy Spirit in your life? Holy Spirit comes with conviction, and that's a good thing. So often we run from conviction, but the fear of God is a convicting spirit. But the conviction is not condemnation. Jesus did not come to condemn, but to set you free. So the beautiful part about coming and, and having the conviction of it in your heart is that he wants to take that conviction and replace it. I want to take out a heart of stone and put in a heart of flesh. Amen? We want his ears to hear, don't we? We want his eyes to see. They are available to you, but only through Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit connects you to Jesus, who connects you to the Father. The vine and the branches are there for a reason. He wants to speak to you and through you and with you. Amen? This is the beautiful part about what Holy Spirit is. He is here now. He is here. The veil was torn, the rocks were broken. And the heavens were torn. It says they were rent so that he could come and live among us. He couldn't be here if we weren't right. But by the blood of Jesus, we are made right. So if you don't feel like you're right, let the blood of Jesus cover and let the, let the, the spirit of truth direct you into new life. Let's pray. Father, we need to be more aware of your spirit, to be more aware of Holy Spirit. Rise within us, move within us, rest on us. God, we're asking that this would be a place that is known as a resting place for your Holy Spirit that this church, not just the building, and, the, and, and even as I say that, I even hear you saying, it can be the building too, but it's the people in the building. So Father, would this place and these people be a place that is known for your Holy Spirit? That this is a place where you have freedom to move and freedom to speak and freedom to rest. We give you permission, Holy Spirit, to do what you want to do and to say what you want to say. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The Refuge is located at 130 Gulf Freeway North in League City, Texas. 
Come join us Sundays at 10.30 a.m. We value His presence and we value His people. Find out more at www.therefuge.live.